You want a song for me? I'll give you a song. The Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. That's the name of the band. Tell wow. me you heard them. Tell me. You, no, you never heard them. No, no. Come on. Yeah. With a name like that, you know if you've heard it before. It just sounded like you picked three random words and put them together. It's awesome. <laughs> well, if you think the title's awesome, wait until you hear the name of the song. Oh, God. Okay. What have, we, what have you got here? Found God in a Tomato. <laughs> That reminds me of like those people who see like the image of Christ in a piece of toast <laughs> or like a potato chip or something. <laughs> um, They're calling up the Smithsonian, like, how much is it worth? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You you be good. You let it bounce back. I'll go listen to the song. <laughs> okay. It's showtime, folks. out there and into the music world i'm andy that's greg and you know what we do here we share music and we react to it and then we discuss it and from what i gather our man on the rebound greg over there has got a tune for me greg what have you got in store my friend i don't know i mean since being sick i think i've uh, taken a renewed sort of sort of thought about my music i don't think i want to share it anymore i think i want to just keep it all to myself oh this could have been an email. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Instead of a confrontation right now on screen. In front of everyone. Everyone's watching. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. We'll, we'll we'll talk. All right. I'll give you I'll give you one more. <laughs> and then we'll talk. Um, all right. How about I give you uh, the psychedelic porn crumpets? I mean, if you want a song, if you want a song for me? I'll give you a song. The psychedelic porn crumpets. That's the name of the band. Tell wow. me you heard them. Tell me you, no, you never heard them. No, no, come on. Yeah, with a name like that, you know if you've heard it before. It just sounded like you picked three random words and put them together. It's awesome. <laughs> well, if you think the title's awesome, wait until you hear the name of the song. Oh God, okay. What have we, what have you got here? Found God in a tomato. <laughs> That reminds me of like those people who see like the image of Christ in a piece of toast <laughs> or like a potato chip or something. <laughs> um, They're calling up the Smithsonian like, how much is it worth? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you be good. You let it bounce back. I'll go listen to the song. Okay. <laughs> Intro is really beautiful. Love the um, the strumming out of the chords in the intro. Um, it's starting to fill this with a lot of sound. Um, so let's press on and see what the next um, seven minutes plus have to offer.
my reaction suggests that that wasn't awesome what just happened, but I was just kind of letting it wash over me. That was a definite change in dynamics and, um, and speed tempo of the song. This is uh, this is interesting. A lot of twists and turns, and but one thing that's consistent the whole way through is just how good all of this sounds.
I mean, for a, such a silly band name and a silly song name, that was actually a really mature sound out of a, um, a dare I say, flirting with kind of proggy sounds or classic rock sounds. Um, really, really enjoyed this. Um, and again, 852. Didn't feel like 852 and what you're listening to during that duration of time is just really sound uh, rock and roll music. So hats off to these guys. Yeah, I've, re I've returned. Um, this was a surprise. You know, it, your your mind it can't help but begin to judge or start to paint pictures of what you think you're about to get into when you walk into a band uh, called Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. Yeah. And uh, a song that makes you think it's about finding God in a vegetable or fruit. I still don't know what they, or berry. What is a tomato? Uh, but <laughs> I got to say, really despite the name despite the, the the track title really mature sound like really talented musicians that know their craft um was what i you know that was sort of the the, the thing that stood out to me in the end um from a macro level but the song started i really love the well fleshed out intro um the musicality of it and the chord picking and 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 strumming um and these bass notes that were almost bass chords because you could tell that they were two notes played simultaneously on the bass that kind of harmonized with an, with one another so yeah. they're kind of bass chordy in, in their sound um and this progresses for a while i think well just over two minutes of this kind of really great classic rock type sound and then 213 or so rolls around and you get this like more frenetic y garage -y type guitar stuff that that hits you out of nowhere that you I mean weren't expecting. Um and the tempo and the riff change and it just becomes frenetic, um, distorted jangly sound in the guitar. Yeah. Uh and it really just took off. It was a total dynamic shift uh to the int from the introduction to this and then it begins to the vocals come in and at this point it almost starts to sound like Again, like 70 sounding vocals, um, both in just how they're sung, but also the production where there's this guy kind of like um, echoey or haunting nature to the harmonies that are delivered throughout, almost yeah. psychedelic, which, I mean, it's in the name of the band. Um, so it did have a bit of this psych rock sound that they're leaning into it at, at times. Um, there was this uh, soaring, almost otherworldly, psychedelic sounding harmonies Um and it was just such great production choice uh, to go with that that distant echoey sound uh, in, in the vocal tracks. Uh, the tune then starts to slow down and there's just this lovely bass groove that kind of takes over um, with some flinty guitar work that's that's going on in the background. And then the, big, big, the guitar just takes off. It begins to do this great lead um, that is it's just mixed so well that like it the lead doesn't drown out the rhythm section like it's very even sounding which sometimes can be a sometimes you pop on a song and the lead drowns out the the rhythm or it gets lost behind the yeah. rhythm and it's just so well evenly yeah. mixed yeah um and that's uh, it, it, and there's also this uh the accompanying vocals that are still going on during the lead which is really cool and interesting and again just an incredibly mature sound for a band um with such a silly name. And when I heard the sound of the band and then I heard the name and now like looking back and listening to it, um, it just reminds me of another band. Uh, is it, I think it's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is sort of a band that they kind of like, their sound reminds me of it, but also this silly band name, but this really great mature sound that they've got that are kind of interestingly juxtaposed so um yeah that was it was it was a hit for me man i really really liked this tune so tell me uh tell me some more about it in the band yeah i will so this song actually comes 2016 mm. uh from uh again the psychedelic porn crumpets um there's no real meaning behind the band name the band chose it they thought it was amusing um How could you not but yeah, they're from Australia, and <laughs> oh, I think King Gizzard is too. That's so weird. Yeah, the Lizard Grizzard and all. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's yeah, yeah. you know who's also from 
Australia and where I detected him before I knew they were from Australia. I one of the things I really found interesting when I was listening to a song was especially as as they because they were changing up as you were sort of describing, you know, mm-hmm. um, one of those change ups, whatever. I started hearing more and more uh, like a tame Impala type mm. of sound. And mm. uh, it's interesting. He comes, f- comes from Australia, Australia. And I really feel like um, that, yeah, that part, there were a couple of parts there. It just sounds so much like, like his sound, you know, not one of his songs, but just like mm. his sound. Um, and I like his sound and his sound is like a throwback. You know, he, especially in the earlier days, I think he's gotten more poppy now, but you know, yeah. especially, but he's still putting out some really interesting stuff, but especially in the earlier stuff, you know, you had more of a rock sound and he was doing like, you know, homages to like the Beatles and to Zeppelin and to, you know, other those great bands from the 60s and the 70s with just some of the sounds and the guitar work and stuff like that. And I really feel like that's what this band was doing in this song, you know, that there were, I think there was that old. A, I think there was even a point where I stopped and said this vote the vocal the way the vo- vocals were produced and that haunting sort of sound reminded me of late era beatles when they really were leaning into some yeah. of the psychedelic stuff that yeah. we got in their later albums so it, it that doesn't come as much as a surprise to me it's almost like affirmation that you sort of got a beatles type vibe to some of the the decisions that they made in the songwriting it's not like the whole thing sounds like a beatles song but there are elements to right. it where i was like oh that, that's interesting kind of takes me back to that era that's and I, I also think like the the guitars, a lot of the guitar solos that were flying around, you know, stuff that was, um, there's a lot of a feel sort of, at least to me, feel sound, the more technical, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that again is a throwback to, you know, like when you think about Zeppelin, and some of those mm-hmm. bands with the guitars and just, you know, you know, um, not so worried about how technical sound and you know you are but just you know all the feel all the you know mm. kind of blues type of feel to it a little bit in some of it but um i don't know i just stumbled upon this uh on youtube and you know um i was just it it was one of those like oh you know like i'm intrigued by an, every time i see an, like a nine minute song whatever 10 minute song i'm like you know uh, i'm intrigued and yeah. I, I jump in a lot, you know, when I kind of discover it and I say, all right, you know, force me, um, make me stay, make me stay. Because, you know, who wants to hang around for a 10 minute song if it's just going to be just solo at the solo at the solo and just the yeah. same thing. And this band just made me stay, you know, so yeah, I'm just that, that, I them. think I made yeah. the same observation in the in the reaction where at the end I was like, yeah. And here's another example of like an eight minute song that. Uh, you just don't get tired of They're, they do they throw enough at you and at the right time that it's not jarring and that it goes by so quickly for the amount of time that it is um, yeah. and it's just you know it, it's a uh, testament to, to how well the song was written really so they formed in 2014 and they're made up of English guitarist and singer Jack McEwen guitarist Luke Parrish uh, drummer Danny Caddy bassist Wayne Bill and Donna and keyboardist Chris Young, uh, who began playing together in an old horse barn in rural Leederville. Mm. So again, you know, I mentioned one English guy, but I think most of them are from Australia. Um, they identify as playing like psychedelic <clears throat> rock, uh, progressive rock, garage rock, alternative rock. So uh, 2014 yeah. and present, they have like four albums out. And like I said, this was 2016. I don't know if this is on the first one or second one. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'm just kind of discovering them like, like, uh, like you are. I don't really know anything else from them. Um, and, uh, but I love this so much that I just kept going back to it over and over. I'm like, I'm going to get a stand. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm glad you did. It's interesting because I mean, it's, <laughs> I keep cutting myself off, but it is something that would, would ring true with me. I mean, as far as the influence that these guys have, um, you know, employed in their music. It, it, it just resonates with me there there were i think at the end I, I even mentioned the two of the the designations that you gave them um i said this reminds me classic rock for sure sort of like you know sort of revived uh classic rock and a little bit of that prog stuff because it moved around yes. a lot and it changed yeah. its sound a lot um so there are definitely both elements i picked up on there and um I know we've have um, a few listeners 
uh, to say the least, that are probably from Australia and have weighed in from time to time in our comments field. So maybe they can help us shed a little bit of light on on these guys or maybe some other tracks by them that we should go check out because uh, they're definitely – I would like to get pointed in the right direction, but I know it's a direction that I want to go in as far as listening to more of their stuff. Cause this was, uh, this is cool. This is really cool. That's an open invitation to anyone out there in Australia. We know this band, love this band and this song. Yeah. Please put in those comments. Um, I got the lyrics open because I really think you might actually enjoy. Uh, yeah, read. Give them to me. yeah. Listen to this. So I'm barely operating yet a functional being. I always seem to be vacant parading myself as an adductee. Then one day I was transposed from a simple young man to a godly tomato that held all existence and told me that we should expand. And now the <laughs> world will always revolve around me. I'll wake up and I'll always be fine. Now I know everything always will be easy. And the way I like, I'm grateful that I held that tomato so it could change my life because I'm different. At least I thought so. What a triumphant occasion. Oh, to change your design. Oh, that one thought has left my head on a pillow on my cloud nine. I mean, I got to say, like, as I was reading this, these lyrics for the first time, um, I, it, just, it, it just struck me how I, I said to myself, they were singing all this when that music was going on. Like, yes. I had no idea that he was singing, like, these lines, you know? It's yeah. so freaking interesting. Um I wonder how many more fruits can connect to my head. I would take a papaya, travel the world and the universe as two best friends. And now the world <laughs> and now the world will always revolve around me. I'll wake up and I'll always be fine. Now I know everything always will be easy and the way I like. I'm grateful that I held that tomato so it could change my life. Of course, I'm different. At least I thought so. And it, this, it's coming to an end. And I found it gets harder every time. I count backwards in my head. Time, I'm coming back with. Time, I'm coming back with. Time, I'm not here. I'm coming back with and repeats that all my life, all my life, all around me. I'll wake up and I'll always be fine. Now I know everything always will be easy. And the way I like, like it, she repeats it. I'm grateful that he held that tomato so it could change my life because I'm different. At least I thought so. Well, that guy is different. <laughs> <laughs> and God bless him for being different. Yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is, is like, <laughs> as silly as it is, uh, it, it sounds like he's found like happiness or sort of he's reached the next plane of understanding and yes. he's you know, content with where he is. And I think that's probably the theme, even though he's found he found a funny way to yes um illustrate it through this this tomato and, and papaya and these other fruits and vegetables. It's it's interesting because it's the lyrically it starts off in a in kind of the serious introspective way and then it, it enter the tomato and things become a little bit weirder. But it's still I mean it's a great it's a great song. As man. you mentioned on the other side, you know, when I lo when I lost it <laughs> about the toast, you know. <laughs> I mean, it could be in, you know, in a form of toast. It could be, you know, in in the way your your soap as you wash, as you use it every day. It's just it's it's melded into the shape of Jesus. You know, it's just the clouds in the sky. We often look for symbols there. Whatever uh, presents itself to you in an image, in something you hear, yeah. in something you whatever you know that makes you that maybe is that turning point, that pivotal moment when you think you finally understand things, you get it. You know, yeah. um, God bless, you know, and I, I mm -hmm. think that's what he in a very clever way that at some point in his yeah. life, he feels that he finally started getting it. And now yeah. that he's starting to get it, you know, um, yeah, that his life is a little bit better. I don't know. No, no, I think I think you're right. I just think he's having a little bit of fun with it with it as well. And having fun with it. Yeah. yeah with what the subject of In a tomato. The, you know, yeah, exactly. The tomato. Or uh, maybe no, or maybe he read no seriously, because you do hear these crazy. I mean, you see it on TV, oh. you know, you know, cameras go to somewhere in northern Italy, you know, and then it's like, really? You know, it's it's <laughs> Yeah, uh, they have a crying Cheeto Jesus and they're like, yeah, Oh my god, you know. It's a shadow my coming from looks a like the Virgin Mary. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, really? <laughs> So maybe he is, or maybe that's what he could be just like, it's like, ah, come on, man. And he just yeah. wrote this whole song about that, but who knows?
Yeah, who knows? But it's great it doesn't song. matter because it's a great song, ah. uh, regardless of whatever the mystery is behind it. Love it. Um, yeah, man. Thanks for sharing this one. This is a good one, man. Cool, cool. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And folks out there, I really hope you liked it. And folks who like this band, love this band. Yeah, again, put those comments yeah. in. Open invitation, do that. And uh, like the song, uh, like the reaction. If you did like it, that'd be fantastic. Sub with us, that'd be awesome too. And we'll see all of you on the next episode, right? Because now you're, you're like, well, I came here for the tomato. Well, stay, <laughs> there's more stuff coming. So we'll see you all on the next episode of Into the Music. <laughs>